you ever uh, fly your drone with your birds at all? Yeah, I do. I do. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, difficult, uh, but they don't care. Really? I flew it up. I flew my drone up at the Hoosier Classic one year uh, with all those birds up in the air. It was it was crazy. It was heart pounding. Honestly, it was nerve wracking because they would fly at the drone and kind of intimidate it as a group. I didn't run into them, but they would run around the drone and clip it occasionally. Really? And, uh, yeah, it was really nerve wracking. Flying a drone with pigeons and it was yeah. chasing, they were chasing the drone? They would, as a flock, kind of come at it and fly around it, basically intimidate, try to, I think they were trying to intimidate it. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. They'll do it to hawks too sometimes. Didn't group. I tell you about that, Phil? Yeah, you did, you did. Cause I was saying, I'm like, that'd be cool to have something, you know, my friend had a drone and I was telling Maker we fly it with my racers. And it's like, I mean, they'll go after that drone. I didn't they might, they had, yeah. yeah. They, the they could. The ferals yeah. were were attacking it. I was checking uh, checking the top of a uh, parking structure where the gas pumps are, and there were fer- probably a thousand ferals up there, and they were just they were strafing my. Uh, yeah, my strafing drone. is a good word. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not—it's not like they were attacking it, but they were. I think it's an intimidation thing, and they were just kind of, you know, bullying it around a little bit. Oh. Um, they do that with they, the hawk too. The hawks, um, yeah, I've seen them around my house do it to a hawk. Um, once they're way up in the air, they'll do it to a hawk. not a falcon, but a uh, cooper's. They will. I tell you, we've had—I've had hawks attack my drone. That's who attacks a drone, or the hawks, cooper's hawks. I'm looking at it. It's always my neighbors with a shotgun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the All About Pigeons podcast. Today we have with us David Stevenson from Castle Pigeon. David is a photojournalist by trade and an associate professor at the University of Kentucky. Together with his wife, they started a small business, Castle Pigeon, Castle with a K, and they sell natural health supplements for pigeons. David is also the president of the Lexington Racing Pigeon Club. Thanks for coming on and talking with us today, David. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to to talk to you guys. So can you give us just a brief little bio with your background with pigeons? There's a really direct tie to the photography part, too, because really the pigeons started with photography and photography started with pigeons. Well, they actually started with doves, but um, almost the same thing. Uh, My my fascination with birds started when I was, you know, six or eight years old and discovered cameras and photography and I was looking for things to take pictures of and discovered I, re- I remember this very very clearly i discovered a morning dove nest in the tree in our front yard as you probably know morning dove nests you know they'll they'll park themselves and they won't leave the nest for just about anything so i was able to climb up that tree and get really close to this dove with a little kodak instamatic film camera and take pictures of it you know pretending to be a national geographic wildlife photographer at eight years old i just love birds and as a young boy and i start after that i started setting up um feeders and blinds in my backyard where I would make like I would I would take a log and put food behind it so the blue jays and cardinals would come up and sit on the log and it would look real and I was trying to take pictures of them and um, it wasn't long after that that a neighbor look I have a this is a very typical story that you probably have heard a hundred times from everybody else where you know this started with a neighbor as a kid and I never let go of pigeons you know and that is true for me but mine really kind of came through the route of photography of a neighbor and doves and then it wasn't long after that that i discovered the racing pigeons because i was you know the doves you can't let out i couldn't let them out of their cage and uh once i heard that you could do that with racing pigeons homing pigeons i thought well then that's what i need to do because i want them to be outside so i can take pictures of them and how cool is that that you could let them out and they come back and so it was really at that moment that i got hooked on birds and pigeons specifically and then through high school i had them through high school and uh I took ornithology classes, college level ornithology classes in high school at the neighboring college where I lived and was really faced. It it was cool Um, and it was inspiring. And I I came very, very close to going to Cornell to study ornithology and be a bird scientist. Uh, But photography was tugging at me and I got some good offers from some state schools. And so I went to school for photojournalism instead, but the birds were always there and were always a favorite, favorite subject of mine. So. Um, they never really left, even though my career took the path of photojournalism and, and not not the study of birds. And then it was, I had to, you know, like every, most everybody else, I had to give up pigeons when I went to college and start my life and career and family. And so it was about 15 years ago that, uh, 
you know, I finally got a yard big enough and a home that I could have pigeons and got them, got my pigeons back. And I actually went back. The, the best story here is that I went back to the same person that sold me my first pair of racing pigeons when I was 12 years old. He was still alive and still racing pigeons as like this 80 year old dude. And his name's Loftus Green. And the pigeon club was still there in Lexington. And I ended up doing a story for, for the local paper, pictures and, and everything uh, on him for the local paper while I was getting to know him again and getting to know the club again. And um, bought another few birds from him to populate my loft. It was, an, it was a nice full circle moment. To, it was like 25 years later or something. It was crazy that he was still kicking and still had pigeons and I could get pigeons from him again. So that that's the story, the this kind of short story of pigeons and how they are intertwined with my life and my photography. Uh, here we are now, still with the. Uh, I still take pictures of them every day. I have an Instagram account with a pretty good following, and uh, it's called the Pigeon Photographer on Instagram. If anybody wants to go look at those pictures, um, so they're they're a favorite subject of mine. I'm shooting pictures every day, mostly with my phone, frankly, but sometimes with the big camera. What inspired you to start doing a supplement store? Oh my God. So also, as you know, and probably most of your listeners know, when you're faced with starting in this sport or even after you've been in it a while and you get the catalogs and you go shopping online for something and you're faced with hundreds and hundreds of products and you're thinking how, especially when you're in the competitive part, like racing is competitive. One well, show, shows are too, but your performance is what I was thinking about when I say competitive. You're looking for that edge and you're, you're thinking all of these supplements, I, I must have to have all of these supplements, right? I've got to put this potion in the water because that somebody's selling it and I'm trying to figure out what in the world am I supposed to do here, especially in those first couple of years because I'm getting back into pigeons and having been not in them and, and frankly as a kid i never did any of the supplementation or medication or any of that stuff i didn't even know what it was i, I just didn't worry about it um, and it wasn't accessible so accessible when you're you know back in the 80s i like everybody else i was buying everything thinking that i was going to win races you know i'll buy this potion and all of a sudden i'm going to win races and of course i didn't and i'm not going to win races just because i put garlic in the water or some pink thing that changed color of the water and i i, I was really overwhelming and I finally killing all my dreams right here. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it was just really overwhelming to me. And I didn't know what to do and I didn't know the approach. And I f finally just started listening and reading and talking to other people and um, thinking about my own life and my own philosophies with health and decided that I wanted to, well, I, I just, I knew I needed to make something simpler. And I also knew that I wanted a lot of most of the health that we um, deal with start in the gut. You know, we've got to start with health in the gut. I, I was a believer in that and I knew that and that's where I wanted to focus. Coincidentally, I have a friend, I had a number of friends who work for a company that is just down the road from me in Lexington called Alltech. And Alltech is a global animal nutrition company. And this friend, was telling me about well i even interested in in side conversations you know i'd hear about their products and their products were mostly marketed towards equine cattle pigs fish and poultry you know really big farming industry kinds of things not necessarily pigeons but what they were describing in their products sounded like things that we needed for our pigeons also so I started talking to him and started researching their catalog a little bit. And then it wasn't long after that that um, I was at a reception for it was it was a media reception, but the uh, Alltech president was there. They were hosting it. So the founder and president of, of the company, and this is like this four billion dollar company, was in the room and he's an Irishman saddled up next to him and started talking to him and I said you know there's I think there's something here with your products for racing pigeons as I've been reading about them and his eyes lit up and he in this Irish accent started telling me all these stories about when he was a kid in Ireland watching the old men carry their pigeon baskets to the train station and take them down the road or let it put them on the train and they would fly home and he just loved those old men and loved those stories and so he 
he said, we need to do this. And I said, okay, well, I don't know what you mean by that, but okay. And uh, it wasn't long after that, that, you know, I got in contact with other people in that company, including the lead nutritionist, the lead nutritionist at the entire, in the entire company. And talking about a scientist here contacted me and said, uh, I'm supposed to talk to you about pigeons or something. <laughs> and I said, well, look, I know that people are already using your products. They're mixing them themselves. Um, and I was using some of them myself, but I didn't know what I was doing um, because it didn't have instructions for pigeons. And she said, well, let's figure out what to do here. And my thought was that I was going to help them make some products for them to sell. That was my thought. Well, I'm just going to be a consultant here and I'll help you tell, I'll tell you what pigeon guys need, you know, what the stresses are and what the problems are that we have to address consistently then i'll help you get into the market and tell you these kinds of things and that, that and then i'll then i'll use your product because that's what I, I would like to use your product i want to use it the right way and then eventually they said well no that's not what we're talking about we're, we're going to help you make the product and you sell it i'm like I, I wasn't looking to get into the business of selling products i just want to use a product that works and has some science behind it that's really what i wanted was this is a company, this is a multi-billion dollar company with scientists and researchers. There's no guesswork in what they're doing there. And a lot of these things in the catalogs that I were reading was reading that sounded like somebody in their garage was just making something up and guessing. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted science and research and something that um, validated what I was trying to do. And uh, they could do that for me. So in the end, that's what we did. She she helped me develop uh, four or five products to begin with and helped me formulate them properly for pigeons and for the purpose that we intended. You know, so that that's now where I I source my product. I had to learn a lot about, I've never started a business. I've never done any of this, this stuff. I had to learn supply chain and mixing and bottling and labeling. And um, thankfully I have, you know, with my journalism and communication skills and photography skills, I could do everything myself really I, I took all the pictures for the labels i designed the labels myself you know fit, sourced the bottles and all those found the company that would mix them and bottle them for us at first anyway uh and um we figured it out and i figured out i know how to make websites i know how to do digital marketing um i know how to make advertisements you know so we did every, my wife and i did everything ourselves and i uh, got it launched in i believe 2017 off to the races now we have a pigeon business now all of a sudden I like, you know, you, you mentioned the word potion. I feel like that's totally where it is because in those catalogs, you know, that you get, it's just page after page after page. And, you know, they make it seem like you need every one. And, you know, the term potion is kind of funny, but I could totally see where this is the one, you know, this is. And then, of course, there's also different kinds of supplements that are the cure-alls, you know, it takes care of everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you guys advertise as, an, as a natural product and you talk about starting with the gut first. What is... Like, what's your most popular product right now that you guys are selling? Well, where we started, and, and one of the ones I started uh, testing first was an acidification product. So we know readily that everybody and their mother uses uh, um, apple cider vinegar. You know, if people, I don't know if everybody knows why they use apple cider vinegar, um, but they just know that everybody's been doing it for... <laughs> decades and and it worked and i think it does work and i was using it for a while there but i haven't used it in seven years eight years probably haven't touched it not a drop of it so they have a product that we made and well adapted and made that was specifically for um acidification of the gut so acidific and this is our number one seller and it always has been because it's not just the acidification of the gut because the other the other facet of acidifying the gut is also to provide probiotics for the gut. So the acidification has one very specific purpose, and that is to create an environment in the gut that is inhospitable to the bad pathogenic bacteria. So bad bacteria, they thrive in a certain acidity level. And then they don't thrive, they just don't like the environment if it's acidic enough. Now the good bacteria that we do like, that's beneficial and creates all that gut flora that we like and makes a nice system for digestion and absorption of nutri nutrition and all that stuff, they like a particular acidity level as well. With this product, you can do, well, it actually does four things, but two primary things. One, it acidifies the gut 
to an appropriate level that dissuades the bad bacteria from living there, but it creates an environment for the good stuff to thrive, but it's also putting the good stuff in there. It's also creating populations of probiotics. So it has probiotics built into it. So it's getting both of those things at once. It also has um, electrolytes in it, and it also has some extra digestive enzymes um, that helps with digestion. So it's it's really about creating an environment in the gut that is optimal for good bacteria. It is a bad environment for bad bacteria. It helps with nutrition, absorption, and hydration as well. Uh, so if you think about in terms of nutrition absorption, the other benefit here is that they get more bang for the feed. So we, when we process our food, we're not getting 100% of the nutrition out of that food all the time. And imagine if your system is not working very well, you're definitely not getting all the nutrition out of your food. You know, a lot, a lot of it's going out the back end, unprocessed, so to speak. But if everything is firing on all cylinders, and everything's working really well, they're going to get more benefit from the food that they're eating. And the reason that Altec created this to begin with wasn't because they want, you know, cows to run faster. What they want, the farmers want, is their cows to eat less. <laughs> they don't want to feed them so much. Uh, so, and pigs and chickens and whatever else. So they can get more nutrition out of less feed, which is really where this started. But for us, I'm thinking about, are they getting more protein or more fats or more calories or something like that? And I have found a, a real practical thing you can see with the birds when they're using this product is that their poops are tighter and they're smaller. I talked, I talked to a guy the other day who said he was using it and, I, and he said he started using it. And I said, I bet you noticed the poops were smaller and tighter. And he said, yeah, absolutely, they were. And I think, you know, part of that is because they're probably not eating quite as much and they're just absorbing more of the nutrition from it and there's less waste coming out the back. And being a racing pigeon guy, since you've used the products, you know, this is the magic potion test, I guess. But uh, <laughs> have you noticed any, you know, your birds, you know, coming in faster or maybe a healthier breeding season or anything like that? Well, you tell us it's about the first million you won in your race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I, now I race in a really small club. So I do race um, at the club and combine level myself. And I do send out to one loss and futurities. Um, and, you know, you got to have healthy pigeons, healthy babies for those too. You need to send them as healthy as they can possibly be. Sure. Um, but myself, any more, you know, my pigeons are on the, the Acidifier Plus was the name of that product, by the way. Um, I didn't say it by name. I don't see a big difference anymore because they've been I've been using it every single day for seven or eight years. But I do think that my birds are more hydrated. Um, they drink more. Like imagine when you're putting all of these elixirs in the water, and pigeons, you know, turn their nose up at it. I don't know if you've ever seen that when you put something new in the water and they kind of take a sip of it and they're like, "What? <laughs> what is what? I'm not so sure about this." But then you know they might drink it eventually because they have to. But we, we have this um, sweetener. When you open it up, it smells like vanilla or like a malt milkshake. The birds really like the taste of it too. So they drink more and they're more hydrated. And that's especially important in the, in the hot weather too. Um, it's also really good for recovery. So after a race, it's the first thing they should be drinking because it helps with the hydration and electrolytes and the, you know, the system imbalances that might've been created because of the stresses. Yeah, I think, you know, in my club, I mean, I do a lot of things for the birds that I try to, it, it, handling is a big part of pigeon racing of course and it's not just the supplements it's also the feed it's the volume of feed the type of feed and of course it's the birds too you gotta have good birds and this training and there's a whole lot of variables my, my thought on supplements broadly though is that if the supplements can help my birds be healthier than the other guy's birds or at least is healthy enough so that they can be reaching their potential, then they've got a they've got a chance at winning or pulling ahead. And if I can get a one percent advantage over my clubmates, I'll take it. And yeah. I don't know if Acidifier Plus is giving me a 0.2 percent advantage or a three percent advantage. I don't know, but I I do think that um, a healthy bird ha has the possibility of winning. But I think an unhealthy bird that's not at their you know full health potential, they're not going to win a race. I, I am convinced of that. You noticed any kind of like even for the fancy side of it, like feather quality and some of the other supplements that can help with that? I think the Acidifier Plus is probably the, the best thing for the feather quality. Um, and the other thing that's interesting about Acidifier Plus too is that the, the research that Alltech has done on it shows that it uh, um, has a, it reduces the mortality 
when they use the version of it for chickens, it reduces the mortality of uh, the baby chickens. So to me, it's also a very good breeding supplement to have on hand and the babies are going to be uh, stronger and better for it too, because you know, they're, they're being assaulted with, you know, this new world after hatching and full of bacteria and all that kind of stuff. And they need, they need to be exposed to the bacteria so they can start building their own immunity, but they need to have some, some good protections in place too. But, and I think that's, that's also going to be true for the, um, fancy, pigeons uh they need to have good proper development so that they can reach their potential so if they if they if it's in their genes to have good feather quality they need to be at their healthiest to reach that potential to have the good feather quality i think that the breeder advantage product that we have um, so the other powdered products that we have that go on the feed so the acidifier plus goes in the water that's the only thing we have that goes in the water right now um, the other ones go on the feed. And the other ones are all yeast-based products. In fact, Alltech was founded um, on this, this uh, idea of using yeast byproducts to develop these nutritional supplements. And the Breeder Advantage, I think, would be a very good one for the anybody who's breeding pigeons, whether they're performance pigeons or fancy pigeons. Um, again, because we have to start it all starts with breeding. It actually, it all starts with pre-breeding. So before you ever put your pairs together, your fancy birds you know, that are showing that really starts at pre-breeding. I think everybody would tell. I think everybody would tell you that. I know I would tell you that with pigeon racing that that's when it starts because your breeders have to be healthy. So the breeder advantage, especially in combination with our hemp oregano oil and the acidifier plus, really helps get those breeders in shape um, before they lay their first egg. So it helps with the egg quality, the contents of the egg, you know, the yolk itself. And it then also helps with the pigeon milk. So the nutrition that the breeders are getting, the extra nutrition from their feed and also from the supplements too, those get passed down to the babies. And I have had people, a number of people, and I found this myself, that are banding their babies a day earlier than they used to because the pigeon, the babies are just healthier. So they're growing a little faster. Boost them, um, I see. Yeah. yeah, and then there are there are good proteins in our in our products too. They're they're highly digestible proteins, easy to digest, and then those proteins then can be you know, processed and help the soft tissue development, the muscle development, and then in turn, of course, the feather development as well. So all of those internal systems that are growing so fast, they need a lot of good nutrition, and our products can help can help supply that. And again, this is all. Um, proven out through the research that Alltech has done on these products, and I, you know, I didn't have to do that research, and I'm not guessing either because they they can back that up. And then, of course, we see it in the pigeons. I can see it happening. So, you know, you, how many products have we tried where we think it works, but we're not sure if it works? We it makes us feel good, maybe that we're trying to do something, but we can't really tell. Yeah, I like that's... to be able to tell that something's working. Yeah, no, that's on point. I mean, I feel especially because there's such a variety, um, you know, people are just throwing stuff at them and you don't really know. But you, yeah, like you said, you feel good about putting it out. That's probably the biggest thing I think about supplements is that because there's so many kind of like snake oil cures, you know, like you say, the potions yeah. that a lot of people are just like shake their head and walk away from doing anything. I like the idea how you're talking just just anything that helps the general health is going to help the pigeon overall. And that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's instead of trying to, this is for further quality and, you know. I think also, I, I do want to mention my philosophy on um, antibiotics, because I think that's a big part of it. The reason we focus on the natural health supplements is because I don't want to use antibiotics as a preventative, as a prophylactic. I don't know how prevalent it is in, in the show industry necessarily or the show fancy, but I know in pigeon racing that pigeon guy, pigeon racing guys love to um, quote unquote clean out their birds with antibiotics before they do anything strenuous like breeding or racing. And that really just drives me nuts. And I'm not a believer in that because I don't think it's a healthy thing to do for a lot of reasons. I, I also want to make clear though that I'm not a purist and I'm, I don't go to at extremes and I never say never to antibiotics because if I do get birds that happen to get sick and it does happen it's unavoidable sometimes the way the way we operate with putting birds together on trucks and things like that and the stresses 
Um, I'll treat birds with antibiotics. I have some antibiotics on the shelf, but usually the antibiotics go bad because I just don't use very many of them and I have to, you know, restock them because they go, they expire. But I'll, I'll treat a bird if it's sick, but I wait for it to be sick. And then I try to see if it will, you know, recover on its own because I think it's better if it can recover on its own. But if it's a really valuable breeder or something like that, um, I'll, I'll treat it and try to cure it up. And, but I also make note of it because if a particular bird gets sick repeatedly or if the offspring of those birds get sick repeatedly and I'm finding myself treating them or if they're dying, then that gives me a clue as to what their kind of internal fortitude and what their genetics might be and I'll eventually remove them from the system. What I fear with antibiotics, what people are doing is, is that they're creating strains of birds and lofts full of birds that rely on being treated by with antibiotics in order to perform and in order to live properly. And my argument there to, to people who treat with antibiotics indiscriminately and who use it as a preventative and clean out their birds is this. We all have standards for our birds, particularly physical standards. We're looking at what, what the gap in the vent bones. We're looking at wing structure. We're looking at how, you know, does their tail poke up in the air or whatever, you know, that we're looking at eyeballs and throats and how many of these physical qualities are we assessing birds by and then we assess them by the basket in racing where did they finish what kind of winds what kind of distances so we're using these criteria to select birds but how many people ever talk about health and immunity resistance in assessing a bird why would you continue to breed from birds that have a deficiency of immune systems why not have a health standard, just like you have a vent bone standard? Like uh, that baffles me that you would just keep propping up your pigeons with antibiotics when and really you should be using a health standard as part of your toolbox, just like you would be using wing shape or, you know, headwind course or something like that. Well, I just, I don't really get it. So I think we're doing ourselves a disservice by pre-treating with antibiotics so regularly. We were creating birds that need antibiotics. And I told a new fancier this the other day, he's, he's in our combine and he was asking me about what do I, what do I treat with and what antibiotics do I use? And I said, well, are they sick? And he said, no, this guy in the club told me I need to do that. And I'm like, well, why, why would you treat them if they're not sick? I said, if you want to raise a bunch of birds that need to be treated every year, go right ahead. And you're going to need to treat them every year with antibiotics, you know, have at it. But if you want birds that can, you know, manage themselves naturally and, and create their own immune system. And that's the other thing our products do is it helps to, to help them to develop their own immune system naturally. And there's not going to be an antibiotic resistance uh, with our products. They're just going to be able to fight things better um, with the, if they have a natural innate and genetic and environmental immunity to to all of these pathogens that they're faced with in their lives hey tell me about your hemp oil that hemp oil and oregano you were talking about yeah that's another that may be our second best seller now now that one is the um only one that is not where we don't source from all tech because all tech really doesn't deal with liquids they're all powders and, and those kinds of things so i I was using, because I'm using powders on the feed, I need to have a binding agent like an oil. So, of course, we're using anything from flaxseed oil or garlic oil or, you know, cod liver oil, all these things. I'm in Kentucky. Kentucky's a big hemp state. Uh, so I, I like the benefits of hemp. It has a lot of really good benefits with um, the omega, a good balance of the right kind of omega acids, the 369s. It has some other things in it that are really nutritional. Um, and so I wanted to also support the hemp growers in our state. So I was using that myself. And then I was trying to figure out oregano is also a very, very good proven and potent natural antibiotic that won't create a, a resistance uh, for the antibiotic, for the um, bacteria. So I thought, well, why not, you know, combine those two things? And so I was trying that myself and experimenting with it and I liked it and it really worked. So then we just decided to add that line of products. So it's it's a lot like Ropa B and some of these other oregano products. And um, our version only goes on the feed. Um, we have little eight ounce bottles that are $18 for an eight ounce bottle. But when you buy more bottles, you get a, you get a discount. So if you buy like four bottles, you can get them for 15 bucks each. 
Um, we don't add any preservatives. It is only those two things. It is hemp seed oil and oregano essential oil from Turkey, and that is it. So we make them in small batches and in small bottles. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't want that stuff to go rancid or go bad on anybody. So we make it in small bottles. So um, it's very popular. It smells great. You could, it's human grade stuff too. I mean, you could put it on your salad if you wanted. Uh, it'd, it'd be fine. Well, I made my own last year. Yeah. Or I guess in the beginning of the year, maybe. And uh, I left her set outside, and it's it's definitely lost its uh, color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need to. You really should, like any oil, keep it refrigerated as as best you can. I I tell everybody to refrigerate. I personally don't refrigerate it because I go through it fast enough. You know, I can go through a bottle of that in a month and. Uh, it's not i keep it in the shade and in the shed and stuff so it's not How a direct sunlight it, go? it goes a long way a little bit of it like i'll mix uh so what that's two pounds okay so two pounds and i'm have a little squirt thing on my bottle and it's like six squirts for two pounds of feed i mean it it doesn't take much at all to, to moisten that feed and get it glistening it's not the stickiest of oils out there so sometimes there's a little of the powder that's at the bottom of the feed tray afterwards because it didn't stick completely, but it's okay. It's enough. It will stick enough. So I, it has enough benefit that I'm, you, I could just use the oil alone. I'd probably be happy with water. it. I have, and it just doesn't, it doesn't dissolve. It's sep- it keeps separate. Um, so I need an emulsifier and that's really one of the next products I want to make is, is uh, just to get an emulsifier to put with my oregano oil and just create an oregano oil for the water. Because I, I, I mean, it would be easy enough. I just have to get an emulsifier that makes it dissolve in the water nicely. Just haven't done that yet. I know a guy. <laughs> you know a guy? Okay. A guy. Hook me up. Got you. Okay. Hook me up. The, the other thing too that I'm missing is I need a nutritionist who knows how to dose these things. Because again, I'm bro, I'm I'm guessing at dosing if I don't have a scientist behind me or nutritionists. But Alltech, you know, they did all that for me. They told me how what the formulation was how big of a scoop you know per pound or per kilogram but with the oregano oil since they don't deal with that they couldn't help me with that well Sorry. thanks for coming on and uh everybody wants to learn more about this you can check out their website it's castlepigeon.com again that's that's castle with a k so yeah castle we live on uh, we live on castle road that's where the name came from so oh okay uh, <laughs> yeah castle, castle road is where we live and castle uh, uh castle pigeon is I guess I can never move, right? Not right. Call them, but it's also our loft, Castle Loft. Uh, I have a website for Castle Loft if anybody's interested in seeing our racing pigeons. And then the pigeon photographer on Instagram is where you can see pictures of a bunch of my pigeons if you're interested in that too. Well, thanks for coming on and talking supplements with us today, David. Yeah, thanks for le- thanks for letting me ramble on and uh, preaching a little bit about antibiotics. I, you know, anytime I can kind of get the word it's out like on the that, I like it. 15th Dave we've had on here. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> we've had a lot of Daves. I really enjoyed your your show with Dave Shoemaker. Um, I'm a big fan of genetics and follow him and read his books and love all the. I, I'm a big believer in the LDHA and the Urban Four and all those racing genes and I breed for that too. Well, I, listen, guys, anytime you want to chat, um, hit me up. It's good to talk to you and keep up the great work. And thanks for having me on. Thanks, David.